Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome again to the new lecture of the course properties of materials so let's just briefly see what we did in the last lecture so so in the last lecture basically we looked at theoretical uh, shear strength uh, so a simple derivation so assuming that stress is varies as uh, sinusoidal as a in a sinusoidal manner so in this fashion so basically stress in the crystal when you move the atom varies like this so this is the distance that atom has to go so if the atom was let's say we draw three atoms so atom was sitting here it has to go to then this position so it has to migrate through a intermediate position which is this so 0 0 to 1 it has to migrate through a position let us say uh, 0 prime so this will correspond to 0 this will correspond to 0 prime and this will correspond to 1 so so stress varies sinusoidally uh, using this expression and then by equality of uh, shear stress with shear modulus and shear strain we can find out that the maximum shear stress required to uh, move the atom will be g divided by 2 pi and this g divided by 2 pi and g the magnitude of g in most crystals varies from 22 uh, metals 150 gpa so as a result the value of tau m is also between 3 to 30 gpa which is a very large stress so theoretical strength is extremely large you would require a strength to move atoms by of the order of 3 to 30 gpa but what it basically assumes is that when you have this row of atoms and when you have another row of atoms on top and when you are sliding them past one another this whole row moves with respect to this row so which means every atom has to break its bond uh, with the neighbor and then go to the new position re-establish that bond so as a result a lot of energy has to be spent however practical values the experimentally uh, experimental values of strength to cause deformation are of the order of few mpas so for example for pure metals they vary anywhere from 0.5 to 15 megapascal or maybe 0 0.2 to 0 0.2 to 15 megapascal so they are orders of magnitude smaller than the values that you uh, that you calculate using theoretical shear strength so what is the reason behind that the reason so we are saying theoretical strength is is of the order of gpas uh, maybe i don't know 1 to 30 gpa experimental strength stress that is required for deformation is uh, you know few mpas so discrepancy has to have a reason and this region is presence of dislocations or defects inside the met metals so these defects or dislocations make the material much more softer so these def presence of these defects make the metals softer than when they are perfect so obviously when you have a material which is perfect which does not have any defects it is got to be very strong but that is not the case experimentally and we saw various values so in 1934 was the time when this dislocation uh, theory uh, 
dislocation and plastic deformation was was explained the role of dislocation how dislocations assist in lowering the stress to cause the deformation which means real crystals are weaker than uh, the the and have lower stresses for causing plastic deformation or yielding than the strength values which are predicted from theory so so essentially what happens is that uh, so let's first look at what dislocations are okay so we have seen that in little detail earlier in another course uh, structure of materials but let's just for the sake of introduction let's just see what dislocations are so basically uh, we are saying dislocations as we have seen in a perfect crystal if you take a perfect crystal like this let's say this is a perfect crystal and in this perfect crystal let's make a few grids okay Okay, so, you have atoms at various positions so these are the atoms sitting in a so let us say we choose position 1 we go 2 step up so position 2 2 step up then let us say we go 3 step to the right to position 3 and then we come back by 2 steps to position down that is uh, to downward position 4 then again we walk back to position 1 by taking 3 steps to the left. So, essentially if you complete the whole circuit from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 1. So, 1 to 2 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 1 you do not create any extra step. that is perfect crystal. So, you do not have any atom missing or any extra atom or whatever the in the whole thing, but let us say if you have a scenario something like this. So, we have Okay. So, what we have here is let us say if I start now at one let us say at this point. So, we can see that there is an extra row of atom here in a otherwise perfect crystal. So, this is the extra row of atoms. Okay, in a otherwise perfect crystal. So, if this is the case, let us say we go from 1 to some position. So, let us say 1 step, 2 step, 3 step, 4 step, we go to position 2, all right, or let us say we start from here. I think it is convenient to do it from here. So, we start from position 1, let us take 1 step, 2 step, 3 step to go to position 2, which is here. And then we take 4 steps to go to position 2, uh, 3. So, this is position 3. And then we again take 3 steps to position to position 4 to come down. So, we went from 1 to 2 in one plane by taking 3 steps. We took 4 steps to go to right in the same plane to the right to position 3. We come back to position 4, which is same as position 1. Uh, which is same as in the plane in position 1, but now when we want when we want to go back to position 2 by taking 4 steps. So, we take 1 step, we take 2 step, we take another step, we have to go to another step here to go to to take equal number of steps which means I have created an extra step and this is what is the concept of edge dislocation. You, you, you insert in an extra plane of atoms, this extra plane of atoms basically causes a step. So, how does it uh, look like basically? It looks like as if you have a perfect crystal like this, okay. 
So, this is a perfect crystal and the perfect crystal will look like this, but if you wanted to create a step out of it, the step will look something like this. So, you have a step here and there is this little extra step which is created. So, basically it looks as if you have it is when when you move it out, but when it is inside it, it, it may look like that the crystal is sort, sort of little deformed if you have an because you have an extra row of atoms. So, this is called as edge dislocation. Okay. So, when you have this extra row of atoms then this is called an edge dislocation and this extra step that we create is called as Burgess vector. So, of course, when you apply stress to it the stress to it will move this out of the crystal leading to formation of this step. So, this will happen when you create a step. Okay. After stress is applied to move it out of crystal. All right. This is what will happen. So, this is basically you can say the, the dislocation. So, if I now define it, this part of crystal is perfect crystal. So, this region will be basically you can say perfect. This region is perfect in terms of at least atomic arrangement. Shape will be slightly different because of deformation in the lattice because of extra row. And this extra row of atoms which is present here, this is the you can say is the extra row of atoms. So, the plane in which dislocation is going to move. So, you can see that this extra row as you apply stress will either move to the right or to the left. Let us say if it moves to the right, then basically you can see that it is going to move. So, the, the bottom three layers are perfect, it is going to move in this plane where it terminates. So, this plane in which it is going to move it will be called as slip plane and the direction in which it will move is will be the basically slip direction. So, dislocation line basically is into the slip plane. So, this is your slip plane and this is the dislocation line. So, let us say this is the slip plane and this is the dislocation line. And that is why disloc edge dislocations are represented as either this or that. So, these are basically edge dislocations. So, if it is from the top it will look like this, if it is from the bottom then it will look like this. So, so this is the representation for edge dislocations in crystals. So, essentially what will happen is this is let us say your slip plane. and you have created an extra row of atoms which is like this. Extra let us say half plane of atoms in 2 D it will become plane extra half plane of atoms and the Burgess vector would be either in this direction or in this direction. So, this will be Burgess vector which is that extra step that you need to take and the dislocation line is this line which is represented by a vector t. Okay. So, for a dislocation so and the stress that is applied is this is so stress I can so this is stress. Now, so the following characteristics you can see. So, this basically is the dislocation line. So, for a edge dislocation, one can write B is parallel to tau 
and B is perpendicular to T. Okay, and so by this uh, you know, token, tau is perpendicular to T. So Burgess vector is parallel to applied shear stress. Burgess vector moves in the same direction in which, so the extra row of basically the ex extra step that you create is in the direction of applied stress. The Burgess vector is perpendicular to the dislocation line. So dislocation line moves in the slip plane, but the movement is along the direction perpendicular to itself. So B is perpendicular to T and the by the, and if you combine these two what it means is that the shear stress applied is also perpendicular to the to the uh, dislocation line. So these are certain characteristics of the edge dislocation. The screw dislocation on the other hand there is another kind of dislocation. So this is the first type of dislocation which is edge dislocation. So we can say this is first is edge dislocation. Now the second kind of dislocation is basically screw dislocation. So essentially this is a dislocation which looks something like let me try to draw it well. So this is let us say little, little exaggerated right. So you create a step here, this is the step on one side. So this is the step that you create on the front front side, this is the step you can create on the on the back side. So basically what you have done is you have moved this half of the crystal with respect to this half of the crystal along this. So this would be the basically you can say the dislocation line passing through the crystal. So this is perfect crystal and this is where you have created the dislocation. So if you start from this point, point 1, you go to point 2 of the crystal, you come to point 3 of the crystal and then in order to go to or let us say let us the, 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 the easier one would be you come to you come from this point, you take few steps. So let us say uh, 3 steps here, you 3 steps, let us say you go there, you take 10 steps you go up, you take uh, I do not know about 7 steps, you come here, you take 10 steps and then you come here, you have you complete 4 steps and to come back to this point you have an extra step, this is the extra step and this is basically the you can say the Burgess vector. Okay. And, and the line that goes through is called as this the, the, the line across which you have division between the perfect and the sheared crystal. So this is the sheared part of the crystal and this is the unsheared part of the crystal. So basically stress is applied in this direction. So this is stress and this would be stress here so tau would be applied in this fashion so this line when you when you when you apply stress this line will move in this direction so basically for a screw dislocation you can see
for a screw dislocation as you keep applying the stress the line dislocation line this is the dislocation line so let us say this is dislocation line t okay so for a dis screw dislocation this is your burgess vector v b so tau is parallel to b b is perpendicular to t okay b is perpendicular b is parallel to t i am sorry uh, b is parallel to t so this is t and this is b both are parallel so by this token t is also parallel to b but dislocation line moves perpendicular to applied stress so dislocation line moves perpendicular to applied stress it will move in this direction so when the crystal is completely sheared so after after complete movement of course it will look like you have there is a top of the crystal and so basically uh, when this line moves here you will have created the step completely in this direction this is the step that you create step so when the dislocation line would have completely moved of the crystal applying the stress this would have been a situation so this is in contrast to what we see in the edge dislocation in the edge dislocation the dislocation line so you can see in the edge dislocation burgess vector is parallel to uh, shear stress but burgess vector is perpendicular to uh, dislocation line and as a result dislocation line is perpendicular to uh, shear stress however the dislocation line the movement of dislocation line so movement of dislocation line is in the direction of stress similarly here here the uh, the dislocation uh, now here on the other hand the dislocation line moves perpendicular to the applied stress so these are the two fundamental differences between the two kinds of dislocations so in reality what happens is that we don't have perfect edge or perfect screw dislocation what we tend to have a mixed dislocation okay and these mixed dislocations basically are uh, you can say the part of the crystal so basically uh, part screw and part uh, edge so we will do a uh, detailed discussion on this in the next class uh, and uh, uh, what we have done in this class is basically we have introduced the concept of dislocations and we have just stated that dislocations are the ones which are which take part in reducing the amount of stress that is necessary to carry out deformation we haven't gone into mechanisms of this we'll we'll see them little later we have, and what we have done is we have just taken a brief uh, relook at the dislocations what a edge dislocation what a screw dislocation is and we will discuss this in details in the uh, next lecture thank you